We are continuing to name alkane molecules, and this is going to be our next example. So this one is exciting because notice that it has a different shape to its carbon chain. We call this a ring, even though it's not a circle. We call um, any type of connection of carbon atoms where there is no beginning or end, even if it is shaped like a square, or shaped like a hexagon, or it could be shaped like a triangle, we ca always call it a ring. So this is a ring, alkane, and our job when we're naming this molecule, just like normal, our job is to start by finding the longest chain of carbon atoms. Now when we have a ring, we have two options for our chain. Our longest carbon chain could be the ring, that would be one option. The other option would be a carbon chain that was not on the ring. So maybe this right here, or maybe this guy right here. The important thing to keep in mind when you're working with rings is that an atom is only allowed to be part of a ring or not part of a ring. So for this particular molecule, we have three potential longest carbon chains. This carbon atom right here, because it is by default buried into that ring, it cannot be included right here as a potential longest carbon chain, or it also could not be included out here as a potential longest carbon chain. It is forced into the ring. So the ring, as you can see, is a six carbon chain, and that is longer than one or three. So the yellow is our longest carbon chain. We found it. That next step in naming is to locate and name our substituents. So there's one, and here is the other, and these are both substituents that we've already seen. A one carbon substituent is methyl, and this is a three carbon substituent, which is propyl. Let's go back to our rules and see what we should be doing next. So we have found the longest carbon chain, we identified and we named our substituents. Now our job is to number the carbon chain to give the substituents the lowest possible number, which we've done this before. So our longest carbon chain in yellow, our goal is to number it to give the substituents the lowest possible number. Because this is a ring, it doesn't have a beginning or an end, which means that we get to choose which of those six carbons in the ring is actually gonna be carbon number one. And since our goal is to give our substituents the lowest possible number, that guy is the one that we want to be carbon number one. Now where we go from there, clockwise or counterclockwise, in this molecule doesn't matter because we don't have any other substituents around the ring. In the next example, it will matter, so we'll get a chance to practice that. So let's just go clockwise around the ring like that and there our molecule is numbered. So that means now it is time for us to put this name together. Remember, we start by naming the substituents. They will come first, and they are named in alphabetical order. Uh, M comes first, and the first thing that we wanna do is say the location of the substituent. The substituent is on carbon number one. Use a dash, and then say the name of the substituent its name is methyl. Now we move on to our next substituent. We say its location, which is also carbon number one, and we say its name, which is propyl. Sometimes students feel like they don't need to repeat the one. They've already said it, they shouldn't say it again. That's not the case. Every single substituent has to have its location included in the name. The location of a substituent is not going to be implied. It always needs to be specified. So um, here's our substituents. They have been named, and our last job is to name the parent chain. This is a six-carbon parent chain, but it is not hexane. Hexane is this guy right here, a straight chain. Um, so to name a ring, what we do is add cyclo in front of the alkane name 
to indicate that those six carbons are in a ring. So instead of saying hexane, we say cyclohexane, and there is the name of the molecule. So let's dissect it again. One methyl tells us that we have a methyl substituent on carbon number one, and one propyl tells us that we have a propyl, a three carbon substituent, also on carbon number one. And cyclohexane tells us that we have six carbons, that's the hex part, in a ring, that's the cyclo part, with only carbon-carbon single bonds, that's the ane part of the name.